Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So today we're talking about this coffee grinder right here. This is the Yerbonic 080 and no, it's not an EK43. It's not a miniature EK43 and in fact, it's not even made by Melcona yet it looks a lot like one. Now this is a sub $300 grinder with 60 millimeter burrs, flat burrs, low retention to an extent that can do espresso and filter coffee. So today we need to talk about this. Is this a grinder that you should consider if you're in the market for a budget espresso grinder or maybe a budget single dosing grinder? Is this a grinder that you should consider over other grinders like the Fellow Ode, which is also a $300 flat bird grinder? We're gonna talk all about that in this video. We're gonna brew some coffee and some espresso, and hopefully by the end of this video, you should know if this is a grinder that you should either consider or maybe stay away from. But before we dive into this, do me a huge favor. If you guys could just scroll down this video real quick, tamp that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really does make a difference. And comment in the comments down below your favorite coffee roastery. And let's dive into this. So Urbonic, it's a newer brand to the coffee industry, at least here in North America. And they're producing two grinders, that, of my knowledge at least, the 070, which is their cheaper model to this, and this is the 080. Now the 070, it's around $200, which is just insane. But the difference there is that they don't have the adjustment system that this one has. So this one has a stepless adjustment knob. Outside of that, other than aesthetics, they're identical. Now, speaking of aesthetics, this does look like a mini EK43. And that's a grinder that you might've seen in a cafe before. They're widely popular. They're made by Malconig, which is a massive brand in the coffee industry. This kind of looks like a mini version. And I actually am I'm attracted to this. Now, when I take apart this grinder here with these two screws, I can actually find it's 60 millimeter burrs. If I can just pop this off, literally two screws here and the whole front fascia pops off without any tools needed, which is kind of cool. This is a titanium coated burr. It also has a stainless steel option. And this burr seems to be pretty good for espresso, especially if you want like a more traditional style espresso. This is what you're gonna try to uh, get. Like the stock burr is great. And so this is what I was talking about, the EK43 style. This uses vertical placed, vertical mounted burrs. Now it's not identical, it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty interesting that this grinder um, resembles, resembles that grinder. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's pretty cool. I think that's great, especially at this price range. Now this grinder does not have a timer. So the purpose of the hopper is, I would say mostly aesthetics. I'm sure people will use it, but I, I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend dosing your coffee and then opening this when the motor's running, which has an auger system that feeds the beans into the flat burrs and obviously grinds out the front here. Let's try it. So as you might be able to see on the camera, this has a bit of static. And this seems to be a bit of an issue for most flat burr grinders, especially around this price range. Not the end of the world, but this is easily fixed with a little bit of water, a little spritz of water, you can fix that. I would like to see that improved a little bit in the future. But I think the question you wanna know is, Kyle, can it make good coffee, right? It looks good, it's compact, it's quiet. So in theory, it's all good, but how's the coffee? How does it taste? So let us brew some coffee together. We'll brew some espresso. While I'm creating that coffee, while we're brewing that together, let me tell you about something else that can create wonderful experiences, and that is Squarespace. Now, maybe you're like me, and you like exercising your creative juices, or like creating your own spaces, or maybe you just need a website or domain. Whatever the case, I would highly recommend checking out Squarespace. It makes creating beautiful creative ideas and turning them into live websites incredibly easy. You start with an idea, possibly grab a domain along the way, sign up for a free trial, and you have yourself a website. And when I say it's easy, I truly mean it. Regardless of your experience of creating websites, they have templates that you can use for your portfolio, your blog, your small business, or maybe something totally different. It doesn't really matter what it is. Squarespace has you covered on every browser and every device. No need to learn how to code and figure out all the complexities of what we once knew to create websites online. Just import your own photos, your ideas, your videos. That's it. It's that easy. But I would encourage you, don't just take my word for it. Use the link down below and create something. Put your stamp on the internet. And when you're ready to launch, use code KYLE, K-Y-L-E, at checkout for 10% off your website or domain. Thank you, Squarespace, so much for sponsoring this video. So how is the espresso the Urbonic creates? I would say it's good. It's definitely not the best espresso I've ever had. You know, this is better than most grinders I use for years at cafes or even at the home. 
60 millimeter flat burrs. The espresso it creates is textured, it's more traditional. If you like ooey gooey shots with a little more clarity than maybe you get on like a conical burr, uh, which would be a very different geometry to the flat burr, this is definitely down your alley. This won't create like high clarity shots that you might get from some other flappers, but it's not bad. And I think for most people, if you're getting into espresso or you want a flapper grinder for home because maybe you already have another grinder, this burr set does a good job at creating good espresso. Now, if you were to say, Kyle, can you nitpick about this burr? What, what would you like improved? Uh, I do find that it leaves a little bit to be desired in the aftertaste. It feels a little hollow and it can create a little bit of astringency up front, but that's nitpicking and I really think most people won't be able to pick those things out. Also for espresso, the range is fantastic. At least in my experience in the coffees I've ground, I can pull long uh, Slayer style shots with this grinder. I can pull on Diniums. If you don't know how to brew any of those, you'll be absolutely fine for the most part. But let's talk about filter coffee. Sometimes grinders can't do both very well. And that's kind of where the Urbonic falls, not short, but it, it definitely lacks the ability to filter coffee in the way that it does espresso. And by no means is this a bad filter coffee grinder and most people will enjoy this, but I find because it's creating those extra fines to create a you know desirable espresso for most people, the filter coffee can suffer because of that. But if you like dark roasted coffee, if you like putting milk in your beverages, this will do absolutely fine. I'm speaking more to people who love specialty, lightly roasted coffee, who drink black coffee, right? That, that's where you're really gonna notice the difference here. If you're not, this will do absolutely fine. So let's talk about some things I don't love about this grinder. First of all, this is not a zero retention grinder. In my experience, we're left about 0.3 to 0.4 grams of retention. This can be reduced dramatically by using the Ross droplet technique or a little bit of water on your coffee beans. That helps in many ways. Also, I would highly recommend checking out getting a bellows for this grinder. Now, I didn't add one today because I want to review this stock because this is how you'll buy it and this is how it'll come out of the box. But I'm going to leave a link to a bellows system for this grinder down below. That will dramatically reduce the retention that you'll have in a grinder like this as long as you don't mind having a little pump on the top of your grinder. Also, the grinder burrs themselves. These can be upgraded. There's a burr that some people refer to as the Gevi burr because they the Gevi home brewing system uses a burr that has a little more clarity than this burr. So if you're interested in more filter coffee or you want more modern style espresso, you can swap the burrs that are fairly affordable for this Gevi burr. You may want to consider swapping to that more modern style burr, that more uni model style burr. If you're interested in that, you want to check that all out. Again, I will leave a link down below. Now this company that makes the burrs is not Gevi. It's called Grateful Hardwares. Anyways, they make a ton of burrs, including the conical burrs for hand grinders like the budget hand grinder review video I did with like Time More C2 and burrs like that. Some other nitpicks I have with this is this little plate here is what you would sit the port filter on. This works fine. I just don't love how this doesn't have anything to snap into. I would have loved some magnetic system so this could stay in place. It also comes with a dosing cup for those interested in filter coffee. And this does have a 58 millimeter lid so you can stick that into a port filter. And then lastly, you wanna know how this compares to the fellow oat. What I would say, is if you are very interested in espresso, brewing espresso at home, and diving into the world of espresso, especially on a flat burr grinder, the Urbonic 080 is the grinder for you, especially under that $300 range, around 300 bucks. But if you're interested in filter coffee, if filter coffee is all that you do and you don't find yourself doing a lot of espresso, brewing espresso at home, I would stick with the fellow Ode. If you want a grinder that's more of a hybrid, the Urbonic would be the choice. But if you just want filter coffee, I would recommend the Ode. The Ode really isn't an espresso grinder, and unless you modify it, you're not gonna be able to get espresso out of this. So let's wrap this up. If you don't wanna modify your grinder, you don't have to wanna worry about retention at all, you might wanna spend a little bit more and focus on something more like the DF64. Or if maybe the hassle and thoughts of the cups that this produces are just not exactly what you're looking for, maybe you'd wanna look at something more like the SD40, a grinder that I just received and will be reviewing very soon, made by Turin, who also made the DF64 and it's around the same price range. Regardless, I think this is a good grinder in a sleek little package that looks fairly good. It's quiet, it's not perfect, but at this price range, 
I think it's competitive in the market today. Now I wanna hear from you. What do you think about the Urbana Go 80? What do you wanna see this compared to in future upcoming videos where I compare this to other single dosing grinders and to other budget electric grinders? Let me know in the comments below. I'll be reading all those comments. Have a wonderful day, each and every single one of you. We'll see you all in the next video. Peace.